100 feet already, and he's off the track. And he's back in the ruck at the moment, Dr. Martin Winston. No final at the moment, here he comes with a rest. Reds it up with two laps to go. He kicks back on the inside, he's driving to the line, and he's won it! Olympic title. Yeah, he's back on the inside, he's driving to the line, and he's won it! Yeah, he's back on the inside, he's driving to the line, and he's won it! Olympic title. The Alpe Vaudoise Loop begins in Aigle, in French-speaking Switzerland, at the Union Cycliste Internationale, with its World Cycling Center and magnificent velodrome, a fitting starting point with plenty of parking. Crossing three mountain passes, this varied and challenging route rewards cyclists with dazzling views of the Swiss Alps. The lush Rhone Valley offers a few easy kilometers to get you warmed up. Then things really step up a gear as you begin the ascent to the Col de la Croix. The pass ascends 1,300 meters over a 23-kilometer stretch, making it one of the longest, toughest, and most breathtaking stretches of roads that Switzerland has to offer. The climb to the Col de la Croix will take you through villars sur olon This charming village is well known to cycling fans as the stage finish for the two Swiss legs of the UCI World Tour, the Tour de Romandie and the Tour de Suisse. When you're in the mountains, the weather can be unpredictable and you should always bring layers. Carry food and drinks too, although you'll never be too far from a place to eat or a fountain running with drinkable spring water. It's easy to see why the UCI based its headquarters in the region. With well-surfaced roads free of heavy traffic, not to mention the absolutely stunning scenery, the region has become a center for world cycling, offering panoramic views of the Swiss landscape. From the vineyards of the Chablais to the majestic 3,000-meter-high glacier at Les Diablerets. Located just two hours from Geneva Airport and easily reachable by car or train, the Alpes Vaudoises are a blissfully quiet refuge from the hustle and bustle of daily life. Experienced cyclists will discover alpine climbs to push their endurance to the limit. And the region also offers amateurs relaxed riding through the Rhone Valley with few cars to disturb you on your way. A descent of 8 kilometers brings you to the village of Les Diablerets, perched beneath its glacier and the Col du Pillon. From here, the route begins its ascent to the Col du Pillon, which boasts an altitude of 1,546 meters. The Mountain Pass is a station of the Glacier 3000 cable car, which offers visitors an unparalleled alpine panorama. The Col du Pillon marks the border of German-speaking Switzerland. The fun and dramatic descent takes you down into the world-famous resort of Gstaad. The route soon circles back into French-speaking Switzerland, on through the villages of Rougemont and Château d'Ay, and up towards the Col des Mosses. The Tour de France has crossed the pass five times, most recently in 2016.
the ascent to the Col des Moss is broken up by a series of level stretches and takes you through the village of Letiva. You can stop at the Letiva Fromagerie to sample its famous cheese of the same name. The Alpe Vaudoise Loop is the perfect way to experience Switzerland, passing some of the country's most beautiful villages and fantastic restaurants and hotels. There are plenty of opportunities to soak up the atmosphere and try some local specialities as you go, or to simply stop and marvel at the incredible scenery. The Col des Moss reaches an altitude of 1,445 meters before beginning the long final descent back into Aigle. It offers a view of the stunning medieval Chateau d'Aigle, which houses the Museum of Vine and Wine. The route ends where you began, back at the UCI headquarters, where you can unwind on the terrace at the Rhone River. You can find special offers and more information on cycling in the Alpes Vaudoise at alp.ch.